For most of us, the word pals is another way of saying friends. But for one community, that word means something different. It's an acronym that stands for Persons with ALS. And 1,150 days ago, my dad, Dr. Bob Sinnott, joined that community. Currently, ALS is fatal, and there are little to no treatments that help slow down the progression of the disease. It does not care about age, gender, or race. It can affect anybody, and we still know so little about it. But with your help, we can change all that. The goal of this video is to inform you about the fight pals face beyond just the disease. Currently, there are new investigational drugs that are showing promise, but people with ALS can't get access to them. We're witnessing what this country can do when time is against us. Time has been against the PALS community for far too long. We must make their fight part of our lives now. Through support, pressure, and awareness, we can help approve policies that will give people with ALS a chance to fight. Because as you're about to see, that's all they're asking for. The following meeting was organized by the ALS group No More Excuses. Their goal was to communicate to the FDA the need for change concerning access to ALS treatments. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis could be a treatable chronic disease if we decide it should be. If we don't get something, every bond that affected the bat will be worse. I have tremendous respect for the huge responsibility that the FDA has in terms of ensuring safety and efficacy of drugs. But now that I'm on this side of the fence, I think differently. When I looked at my options uh, outside of the standard meds, I chose to go to Seoul, South Korea. Yeah, I've been there six times. So I'm here as both a physician, but also primarily as a patient, to ask you guys who are the ones who can implement change. We're here to see some real change. Matt Bolina, as you know, has had spectacular results. I understand the model for cancer. I think where we're concerned with neurodegenerative diseases, it might not be apples to apples, you know? And, and what you're going to measure and what you're going to see it, are things like these videos where people stand up again and they walk again. We are agnostic if the drug works in people. We yeah. don't care whether you know all we're talking about. The mechanism. Yeah, you know, we don't care at all about that. But we, the mechanism helps discover more drugs. That's why it's useful. Okay, no. but you don't have to know anything. You don't have to know any biomarkers, nothing. Okay, if it helps you function and you can prove it, we'll prove it. If you want an endorsement that we can say that's an endorsement, which is that look, we're going to, there's, it's absolutely no doubt from looking around this room, we desperately need more work to try to come up with effective treatments for ALS. It's a yes, you're going to help us, or no, you're not. So, um, yes, I hope it's a yes. <laughs> I think we all do. That was Elsie Johnson, and she has since lost her battle with ALS, along with three other pals that were present for that meeting, which was over a year ago. It's important to note that PALS aren't looking to fight with the FDA, just the opposite, really. Later that day, we had a peaceful protest to help raise awareness for potential treatments for ALS. ALS is a neurological disease that attacks an individual's nervous system. Currently, no one knows why someone gets it, and no one knows how to cure it. Mike Henson runs No More Excuses, an ALS advocacy group on Facebook that has over 7,000 members. I interviewed him recently to try and figure out what has to change to allow PALS to get access to certain treatments. Or what has surprised you the most since you've had it? The lack of real urgency in this disease, that's gotta be by far the number one thing. It's not just about money, it's about attitude and it's about activism. The people who develop these drugs are amazing. I don't wanna downplay their role in this, it's not their fault. But here's the problem, Matt, is that once that is done, in other words, once we're sure these drugs are safe, okay, we still can't get to them. And if we don't do something about it, I am firmly committed in believing that this entire time period uh, is going to be looked at one day as a tremendous tragedy. One thing that's for certain is that the ALS community is not going to let that tragedy happen. And that couldn't have been more clear the day I saw a clip go viral on Ellen. And you have been hit by one of the biggest blows that life can throw at you. And the way that you have chosen to respond with your strength, your courage, your fight 
is proving just once again that you are remaining the strongest guy in the room. But as you had to start learning more about the diagnosis, what was, what was something that you learned um, that you really maybe didn't expect to learn? One of the things that really surprised me um, was the fact that <clears throat> you're really on your, your own. Uh, <clears throat> as soon as you're diagnosed, um, the <clears throat> doctors say, you know, you have two to five years to, to live on average and um, there's no cure and there's really no effective tr treatment either. That wasn't okay with us. We wanted answers. We wanted to know what we could do to help slow this down, to pause it. I think it's a lot more common than people think because it's such a fast turnover, right? You get diagnosed and you know, you, you passed away fairly quick. Um, and so the numbers actually don't really reflect. Eric is right. According to Johns Hopkins Medicine, ALS affects as many as 30,000 people in the United States, with 5,000 new cases diagnosed each year. The number is estimated at 450,000 worldwide. These numbers are hard to accurately determine because there is no standard measure and the disease takes time to diagnose. But generally speaking, someone gets diagnosed with ALS every 90 minutes. The average life expectancy is three to five years, making this a lethal cycle. And currently, we have no way to stop it. What does your normal day look like from like when you wake up to when you go to bed? Most of your learning has come from other patients and, and other families who are going through the same thing. And you kind of build your own protocol. I have a lot of supplements that I take, probably like, you know, 50 pills in the morning. It's kind of, you know, what the ALS community is talking about, and they'll do anything. We'll, we'll do anything to, to try to live. The most promising treatment pals have been hoping to try is a therapy called Neuron by Brainstorm. And for the past three years, Brainstorm has been conducting a clinical trial of the drug, a trial both Mike and Eric were patients in. You know, it was a brutal trial, 50-50 placebo. And the 200 people that went through this trial really made a sacrifice for ALS uh, research. I don't know if I, if I got placebo or the real stuff, because as you know, it's a 50-50 chance um, of getting the actual drug. I felt like my progression within that time uh, slowed down. It's pretty scary, that feeling, and, and knowing that something was potentially helping you, and now you can't get to it. Okay, that there's something out there that has actually helped people. <laughs> and you can't get it, it's crazy. <laughs> So it's really frustrating. Mentally, <clears throat> mentally, I think that's harder <clears throat> than actually having ALS. In July, Brainstorm completed the final doses for the trial. And this month, Brainstorm is scheduled to present the Neuron Phase 3 clinical trial results. This data will show some insights into how cellular therapy could work as a treatment for ALS. Is it awareness? Is it, do we have to get more political? Is it changing the laws from what you guys have experienced? What has to change in order to, to fix this problem? I think it's a combination of awareness, not only fighting this crazy disease, but the politics in it too. A way to try to fix this is, like Eric said, through policy change and you know, right now, treatment for ALS, it goes through the same FDA path as arthritis, or medicine for a headache, um, and this is a terminal disease. And even if a cure was found tomorrow, it would be years and years before Eric or any ALS patient would even see it, just because of how the trial design right now is. Patients really want treatments. 
we've got a problem. We've got drugs, but we don't have the access. Currently, there are two active ALS bills. Act for ALS HR 8662 is the House bill, and S4867 is the Senate bill. These two pieces of legislation help create new pathways for faster and broader access to therapies for ALS. Both bills support research and expanded access to investigational drugs for ALS. Act for ALS is especially important because it helps fund expanded access through grants, keeps the FDA in the loop by only allowing access to treatments in Phase three trials, and ensures that that data is collected and analyzed. This improves our chances of identifying subtypes that are responding to the therapies. The people who are alive today with ALS deserve a chance. We're raised in this country that is, you know, supposedly the best the best in medicine, best in healthcare, yet <clears throat> you find yourself and everyone with ALS searching outside the country for help. 1,150 days ago, my family joined the Palace community because of my dad's diagnosis, adding us to the many other families in this fight. Every pal that I have met is strong, kind, humble, and relentless in their pursuit to find treatment and a cure for ALS. So it's time we help them. Help them stop counting the days that they're just surviving ALS and start counting the days that they're beating ALS. We can do this through awareness, support, and pressure for change. Support PALS and write to the FDA, letting them know that you want ALS treatments to be a priority for them in 2021. Pressure our elected officials to pass the current ALS bills giving PALS more access to potential treatments. And finally, increase awareness by sharing this video. You can do all of the above by following the directions in the description of this video, which includes links, email addresses, mailing addresses, and phone numbers. Please also continue to follow Stevens Nation for updates. We'll be giving a lot of them over the next few months. Stephen Hillenberg, who created SpongeBob SquarePants, died two years ago from ALS. He once said, when SpongeBob's perseverance shines through and you root for him, that's when the show is working. It's time we root for pals and really get their show working. You're about to meet some of them now. Hello, my name is Danny Williams. I'm 59 years old and I've been fighting ALS for 3,814 days. My name is Anna Noriega. I'm 34 years old. Now I'm battling and fighting ALS for 718 days. I am a United States Navy veteran and I have been fighting ALS for 1,846 days. If we don't get something, a lot of us will not be here again. It has been 544 days since I've been diagnosed with ALS. One and sixty-three days. One thousand one hundred and sixty-three days. I would ask you, I urge you to consider these three therapies to see if we can accelerate the approval process and get them and make them available for people like me and everybody else. I'm 37 years old and I've been fighting ALS for 42 days. One in point to, to cure it. We all need to work together as a group. My name is Eric Stevens. I'm 31 years old. I've been battling ALS for 461 days. And I've been fighting ALS for 905 days. Dr. Bob Sennett, I've been in this fight for 1,150 days. For 715 days. 798 days. For 703 days. 502 days. 509 days. 31 days, and it sucks. For 688 days. 624 days. 376 days. 44 days. 157 days. 195 days. Been fighting ALS. 714 days. 
474 days. 140 days. 621 days. 200 days. 396 days. 242 days. I'm 32 years old and I've been battling ALS for 177 days. For 1,300. 483 days. 1,437 days. 1,613 days. 1,059 days. And I have been living with ALS for 948 days. 2,983 days. 1,677 days.